For more than half a century, a 374-acre site near Weybridge in Surrey, and known the world over simply as Brooklands, has been the home of speed. Speed and the development of precision engineering that produces even greater speeds, that will win races in safety. And today, speed in comfort and luxury for the great air routes of the world. For Britain's latest airliner, the Super VC-10, is another name to be added to the famous names of Brooklands. Built in the enormous hangars on the edge of the old motor racing track, this 171-foot-long giant can carry 180 passengers at a cruising speed of 600 miles per hour. comes from four Rolls-Royce jet engines, which between them develop a thrust of 40 tons, enough to push a train over. With a range of 4,000 miles, which means it can fly from London to Washington non-stop, this great aircraft is the only long-distance airliner in the world with the new-look tail-mounted engines. So today, from the stables of Brooklands, come the gleaming new VC-10s. The Valiant V-bombers came from here too. The world-famous short-haul airliner, the Viscount. Before that, the Hawker Hurricane prototype of Battle of Britain fame. And earlier still, World War I aircraft such as the Sopwith Camels. But Brooklands was probably most famous between the two world wars. And this was how cinema audiences of those days saw the famous K. Don. In 1928, he roared round Brooklands at an average speed of 104 and a half miles an hour. This is world land and water speed record holder, Sir Malcolm Campbell, captain in those days, father of the now famous Donald Campbell. The two and three quarter mile concrete circuit, 100 feet wide and steeply banked, gave weekend racing thrills to millions of spectators from 1907 to 1939. The winners became world famous names, men such as Sir Henry Seagrave, as well as racing in cars, many of the famous drivers of Brooklands took to flying. But after World War II, motor racing on the track was finished. Six years of wartime neglect had left the track pitted and cracked, and the expense of rebuilding it in 1945 was too great. The days of the big cars hurtling round at speed were over. Today, sections of the old Brooklands track can still be seen, but they are hardly recognisable. The aircraft industry on the site has become bigger and bigger. And now more than 10,000 people work here on the Super VC-10 and other aircraft. In the Brooklyn's tradition of speed with safety, new ideas in aircraft design and construction are today producing Britain's new challenges of the air. In the past, most civil airliners have been built with thin sheets of alloy riveted to a framework. But in 1956, this technique was scrapped at Brooklyn's. Instead, more than a half of the Super VC-10's airframe structure is machined from solid metal.
After being squared up, the giant slabs of alloy, weighing as much as two and a quarter tons each, are moved by a special suction lift to the milling machines. Moving 21 feet a minute, on each pass, these mills can bite off almost an inch of metal. Planed to a five thousandth of an inch accuracy, the piece is then moved on for further cutting and shaping. And soon, the slab begins to look more like a panel, which will eventually be part of a wing or fuselage. The slab of metal is inspected for flaws by an electrical sound tester before work begins, and then the finished panel again goes through the same inspection. As much as nine-tenths of the original slab of metal is cut away by the time the correct size and shape of panel is obtained. This form of construction simplifies the sealing of the fuselage and fuel tanks for high-altitude flying. It's lighter, stronger, and cheaper than conventional methods, and means far less riveting, the weakest point in aircraft construction. The less powerful version of this aircraft, the VC-10, first flew in 1962. It is now proving a favorite with passengers on commercial services. But the big Super VC-10 was not airborne until 1964. With test pilot Captain Haley Bell at the controls, the four big jets are started. Everything is ready, and the 150-ton monster moves onto the runway at Brooklands. This complex piece of machinery is the result of six years' work. 400 companies have been involved in making thousands of different parts. The plane has been assembled at Brooklands, and now the throttles are opened as Britain's new Challenger gathers speed for takeoff. Each member of the test crew concentrates on his own particular job and steadily, easily, the big plane is airborne. Another stage of the long and expensive process of designing and building a new plane has been reached. Now that it's airborne, the Super VC-10 must be put through test after exhaustive test, for the requirements of World Airlines are becoming more and more exacting. With this new shape shadowed across the clouds above Brooklands, the Super VC-10, built for the profitable but highly competitive North Atlantic routes, could be the winner that'll bring Britain the blue ribbon of the air. It's the latest embodiment of the spirit of Brooklands.